Hello everyone, Xenia Jimmy here, and welcome back to Let's Play Assassin's Creed 2. Last time, we took out five of Sovereign Rollers' lieutenants. Secure those traits. We can ill afford to let their contents fall into their wrong hands. Forge authority and this mission. Uh, we'll see just how tough the holdouts are when they're forced to go without food. <laughs> if they want to eat, They'll accept Savonarola as their leader. How the Medici family can still hold any sway in this city is beyond me. Because... God, to think I once considered them my patrons. But that was before they broke and opened my eyes. Then I saw the influx of commerce and the division it creates. Savonarola will lead us into a new era, one of fraternity, equality, and justice. All that remains is for us to cast off the shackles of our troubled past and accept the Lord as our savior and true leader. We'll see just how tough the holdouts are, and they're forced to go without food. You! You are not going anywhere! Uh, may just end up having to try and slowly just kill them off one by one. It's gonna be annoying, because... We'll see just how tough the holdouts are. When they're forced to go without food. If they want to eat, they'll accept Savonarola as their leader. Are the Medici family can still hold any sway in this city is beyond me. Oh, to think I once considered them my fate. That was before the prophet opened my eyes. Then I saw the influx of commerce and the division it creates. Savonarola will lead us into a new era, one of fraternity, equality, and justice. Really? No. What's worse is I was trying to actually be as stealthy as I can. We'll see just how tough the holdouts are when they're forced to go without food. If they want to eat, they'll accept Savonarola as their leader. Are the Medici family can still hold any sway in this city is beyond me. I'm losing it. They're not chasing me. That's why you're losing me. To think I once considered them my patrons. Chasing me! Bull! Just total bull! Because I did that before, nothing happened. I want to murder this game. I really do, because God see damn. just how tough the holdouts are <clears throat> when they're forced to go without food. If they want to eat, they'll accept Savonarola as their leader. Are the Medici family? I don't care. I want to murder them. They're dead. I am going to go crazy. What's worse? We'll see just 
Not how tough the holdouts are. We have fought to go without food. Uh, if they want to eat, then accept Cavanarola as their leader. How the Medici family can still hold any sway in this city is beyond me, sir. I think I once considered them my patrons, we say. But that was before the prophet opened my eyes. Then I saw the ethers of Comus and the division it creates. You earned Focus dead! What? I can't see him anymore. Okay, that's just bull. That is just bull. Legitimately, I want to know how the devs actually intended you to do this, because this just seems too tight. We'll see just how tough the holdouts are when they're forced to go without food. <laughs> God. If they want to eat, then accept Savonarola as their leader. Are the Medici family can still hold any sway in the cities beyond me? We're going to get rid of uh... oh, To think I once considered them my patrons. But that was before the prophet opened my eyes. Oh, so we'll get then I saw the ethics so of Comus we'll and the division it creates. The guards. Savonarola will lead us into a new era, one of fraternity, equality, and justice. Oh, come on, you, you All that remains is for us to cast off the shackles of our troubled past and accept the Lord as our savior and true leader. <laughs> We'll see just how tough the holdouts are when they're forced to go without food. No, no, no. I'm not here. If they want to eat, they'll accept Savonarola as their leader. Oh, throw them off the board. Are the Medici family can still hold any sway in the cities beyond me? Come on. Oh, to think I once considered them my patrons. But that was before the brook opened my eyes. Then I saw the ethers of Comus and the division it creates. There, a moment. <coughs> Savonarola will lead us into a new era, one of fraternity, equality, and justice. All that remains is for us to cast off the shackles of our troubled past now, what he and got accept to? the Lord as our savior and true leader. Another corpse. Did anyone see the killer? You got me joking. Come on. Oh, you've got me joking. He's actually coming down that way. Back on the ship. We'll see so just how actually, tough the holdouts are when they're forced to go without enough. food. Good. If they want to eat, they'll accept Savonarola as their leader. There we go! I know. What? What have I done? You tried to force devotion. Sometimes, the people must be told what to think. No good has ever come of that. Benché il mio cuore sia turbato, la mia mente è lucida. Requiescat in pace. Wow. 
Why did the guards... Why did some of the guards leave? Okay, let's go find a doctor and get a bit more health. Let's get... Oh my god. I hate this map. It's so goddamn magnetic. I've lost sight of him! There! Eccolo! Get him! He's saving us time! Running straight to the cemetery! Not what I wanted to do, but hey, I still got the feather. But I wanted to not fall into the water. That's it. Come back any time. to be the downfall we want to have. Daddy and Jancy. I'm always fighting because it's not going to help us. Right, I did rearm myself. I'll do that after this mission. Pass. Pass. Because the next two missions, I might need the gun. People of Firenze, come gather round. Listen well to what I say. The end approaches. Ma is the time to repent, to beg God's forgiveness. Stop the preacher, the preacher's corrupt sermon. Don't you see? This now we technically do this all uh, around a us. number of ways. Unrest, fam, well, like disease, corruption. Me These are the harbingers of darkness. I can't see him anymore. We must stand firm in our devotion. Down on our lest shoes. they consume us. Oh. Target's fleeing. God dang it. I didn't do right. It was not me. I swear. I've only just returned from the dragon. Are throat. you trying to I fight me? We'll get the bastard. That's not the most of them. I will dive down it. Your mind. Since it is your own. <laughs> Not all of us require deception to be convinced. I already believed. All I said is true. Nothing is true. Non è un compito facile il mio. Requiescat in pace. Oh, you. It is true. Ezio! Oh my god, I hate this game sometimes. I am trying to climb up. I see him. Not. There. Not slowly do it. Oh my god. You should not be up here. Lee, down or die. Lee, you should not be up here. I am no egg. I should be up here. I'm going to do something stupid just so I can get health. Come on. Oh, maybe I don't need to. I got a decent remedy. What did you do? And the up. May wellness remain your companion. Listen well! Mm. 
You'll be well satisfied. I know it. Let's head to the bridge because this one's actually one of the ones I actually find really fun to try and do stealthily. And it's not even a required stealth mission, even though I feel like this one, out of all of them, should have been a required stealth. What? Non si passa! Do you hear me? Until you've all submitted and given yourself over to the prophet, Savonarola, this bridge will remain close to you. Arch. I hear you moaning and complaining. You say you have things to do. Places to go, obligations you to fulfill. Ah, you have but one, one obligation <laughs> to submit. Getting away. The Why, Red, that. Is Why raise himself? Apparently, I will feel this. Your gracious Medici have abandoned you, fled into the waste to wallow in self pity. Savonarola wants only the best for you a city free of vice and temptation. A people united by faith. All men are equal in the eyes of the Lord. And so they shall be in Firenze. This is a chance for us to turn over a new leaf. To leave behind our miserable past. And return to simpler times. I am here to help. To lead you into a new future. Hey, don't let them get away. <clears throat> You were a noble's close. How is it Savonarola charmed you? Wealth and power do not ensure contentment. I wanted even more. And now instead, you have nothing. Questo non è che un atto dovuto. Requiescat in pace. Target. Maybe there's still something worth taking on the target. Final man. I the power of the blade. Trading an unconverted wool in the hereby be taxed an extra hundred pounds. Why are you up here? Leave. You should not be up here, Stolto. Reject the base and material. Seek salvation in the flames. Still life. Assassinate the guile Doris. The brush. 
Did the game want you just to go to that long, convoluted route? You can just cheese it just by having that. That we found. God. How are you seeing me? How? How about you just leave, guard? So I thought myself an outcast, a speaker, a preacher, a guide to those who had lost their faith. But in truth, I was deceived. The devil is a crap. I did not mean to target them. Ah. I know that man. Uh, granted, if he's, talking, if he's knocking down his own guards, that's fine. It's like, just get What have I done? What have I done? Your actions were not your own. But they were. My own self-doubt let him hold me as he did. I am sorry. As am I. Non è una scelta che compio a cuor leggero. Requiescat in pace. I should have done the usual way. Hide in the goddamn heat pile. You are not just... getting through. I'm with you. <laughs> what the hell did he do? What did he do? Good. It's gone. Now we take the big burners all the way to Salvanarola. You've done well, Lexi. What happens now? Watch. Silence! I demand silence! Why are you here? Why do you disturb me? You should be cleansing your home, cleansing yourself! There are bonfires to feed, prayers to be said, penance to be done! You will do as I command! You will submit! No! Find the Arboletsu! It can't be far! And now, we've got a new time. Power to the people! You're not getting away. Kill this guy's next time. I'm losing really him. want to. There he is! Get him! I don't know why it's suddenly day. I'm not, so I'm not fighting him. I'll let you get away. Ah. Couldn't obey the law. Go back down, or I shoot. You're not allowed up here. Please! You weren't here before. You were Go away. Now the final mission of the DLC. <laughs> Machiavelli. 
you go over if you didn't press the button in time. I pressed the wrong button. If you want to I pressed X. Such division. Five was why. This insane killer has not been found. I'm sure I have just what you need. Somewhere in the back, perhaps. Fear this evil, wild, rabid animal. He kills any who cross his path indiscriminately. witness to the sacrilege that you would handle this prophet this way. Blasphemers, heretics, you will burn for this. Do you hear me? You'll burn! Deserves to die in such pain. It's you. I knew this day would come. Please, show mercy. I have. Ma ora, che sia il tuo Dio a giudicarti. Requiescat in pace. Silenzio! Silenzio! Twenty-two years ago, I stood where I stand now and watched my loved ones die, betrayed by those I had called friends. Vengeance clouded my mind. It would have consumed me were it not for the wisdom of a few strangers who taught me to look past my instincts. They never preached answers, but guided me to learn from myself. We don't need anyone to tell us what to do. Not Savonarola, not the Medici. We are free to follow our own path. There are those who will take that freedom from us. And too many of you gladly give it. But it is our ability to choose whatever you think is true that makes us human. There is no book or teacher to give you the answers, to show you the path. Choose your own way. Do not follow me or anyone else.
first before we do anything. Ezio! It is time, uncle. Let us finish what you and my father started all those years ago. Indeed. Perhaps now we can finally make sense of this prophecy, and put a stop to whatever it is the Spaniard is plotting. We should start by locating the vault. The Codex pages will lead us to it. Let's take a look. X. Pages, so <sighs> nope, I don't want to do that. Some of these pages are easy to tell what they're what you're meant to do with them because they've got outright. Lines. So these, these ones are the easiest to do. The rest, however, are not so easy. However, you know your geography, you know you know where each part is meant to go. Surprise! It's not them this time. There we go. That's how you do it. Now it, it is a map of the entire world, but there are lands shown here that do not exist. Apparently, they do exist. I imagine they've yet to be discovered or rediscovered. How is this possible? Perhaps the vault will hold the answer. Do you see where it is then? No. It can't be. The vault. It looks like the vault is in Roma, and then the Spaniard. This is why he became Pope. Now I understand. It's not the vault alone he's gained access to, but the staff as well. What staff? The Codex always spoke of two keys. Two pieces of Eden needed to open the vault. One is the apple. And the other is the staff. The paper staff is the second piece of Eden. For years, no. Decades we've sought these answers. And now, at last, we have them. But so too could the Spaniard. And if he does, if he finds a way into the vault, its contents will make the apple seem a trifling thing. I must go to Roma and find the vault. What are the rest of you? We'll do what we do best. Cause some trouble in the city, giving you the freedom to conduct your search. Just let me know when you are ready, Nipote. You know what? I wouldn't have done this. But, not a lot of time. Database. People. Targets. Let's start from the beginning, all the way to the end. Uberto Alberti. Trusted friend of the Auditore family. 
According to the history books, this guy was a saint. He prosecuted murderers, rapists, the worst criminals. One of the best lawyers in Italy, he won every case, in spite of the fact that he was self-taught. Now, I found a back door into the Templar's database server. I've been combing it for some kind of smoking gun. I found it. Apparently, Uberto's family was evicted by the Medici Bank. Uberto's been aching for revenge ever since. And the Templars promised him support. Ezio's father was standing in the way, and Uberto was jealous of his influence over the Florentine government. Two birds with one stone, isn't it? It looks like Uberto used his election to the Signoria as his opportunity to strike. Vieri di Pazzi, the youngest member of the second most notorious Florentine banking family, this kid knew how to burn right through his father's money. Outside of spending sprees involving weaponry, exotic animals, and clothes, he was fiercely competitive. Vieri hosted races of all kinds, boating, horseback riding, running. All of them rigged, of course. And get this, if through some amazing stroke of luck he ever lost, he'd invite the winner's entire family over for a victory dinner and serve them a meal to die for. Francesco di Pazzi. Brought up as a noble in a city captivated by the newly rich Medici family, Francesco was taught to hate the middle class and its social climbers. Dismayed, he watched as the Medici bank eclipsed his own and centuries of influence over the Florentine government slipped away. It looks like the Spaniard offered him a solution. Rather than compete in something as dirty as banking, Francesco only had to do one thing for the Templars, one thing to put the middle class in their place for good. Kill the Medici. Giovanni Auditore tried to stop Francesco by putting him in jail, but the Templars took care of that. Jacopo di Pazzi, the money. This guy was the head of the Pazzi family, and he ran their banking business. An associate of Lorenzo de' Medici, he had nothing against him personally. So he hired four Templar hitmen to take care of the situation for him. Bernardo di Bandino Baroncelli. Brought up to hate the Medici family for the exile of his cousins, Baroncelli ran the numbers in the Pazzi bank by day and murdered for the Templars at night. It was Baroncelli who delivered the first blow. Stefano de Bagnone. Known for his cruelty, Bagnone was trained in Rome as a Templar butcher. It was Bagnone who stabbed Lorenzo de' Medici in the back. Antonio Maffei. Witness to the sacking of Volterra by Florentine mercenaries, Maffei blamed Lorenzo. He joined the Templars to seek revenge. It was Maffei who slashed Lorenzo's neck. Archbishop Francesco Salviati. Convinced he would be the next Archbishop of Florence, Salviati was enraged when Lorenzo stood in his way. But the Templars were there to heal his wounds. It was Salviati who marched their troops into the city. Emilio Barbarigo. Titan of Venetian industry, terror of the underworld. Aided by his powerful family, he cornered the market through smart business practices such as edging out the competition and lobbying the government. He funded the Venetian police force almost single-handedly, keeping the streets safe from crime and his finances tax-free. Emilio claims to be a supporter of the Republic. The problem is, once you own the police force, voting becomes, well, inefficient, as does, you know, opposition. Carlo Grimaldi. Emerging from his palace in Monaco with a craving for political power, Carlo quickly became a key guest at the tables of Venetian nobility, while his reputation for discretion earned him entrance into the back rooms. Here's how the old bastard ended up in the Council of Ten. While visiting the head of the council, Ignacio Contarini, Carlo ran into Ignacio's daughter. Desperate for help and aware of Carlo's trustworthy reputation, she confided in him. Her father had arranged her marriage, but she wanted to run away with the son of one of the servants. 
They'd been in love since they were children, and they planned to start a new life in Milan, where they could be free of her father. Carlo suggested immediate action, an escape by ship that night. The two lovers followed his instructions, and as they climbed the gangplank, they were free. That is, until Ignazio appeared on deck. Carlo was rewarded for his loyalty to the Contarini family. While true love, well, see for yourself. Marco Barbarigo. Although his brother Agostino was destined for greatness, Marco left his mark on Venetian history as well. A tyrant since he was barely old enough to walk, whatever Marco wanted, he got. There are records here for jewels, entire fleets of ships, all paid for by his family and all ordered directly from him. And then there's his personal life. Apparently, Marco's wife, Carlotta, used to be married to his bodyguard, Dante Moro. Dante was captain of the city guard, an heir to one of the most prestigious families in Venezia. Marco was supposedly his close friend, right? But get this, Marco decides he wants Carlotta. In the Catholic religion, marriages till death do us part, and Marco's a good Catholic. So he hires a hit on Dante. Dante gets stabbed three times in the body and once in the head. But he doesn't die. He recovers with severe brain damage. Dante becomes like a child. So what does Marco do? Well, he hires Dante as his personal bodyguard, and he gets him to sign a confession annulling the marriage. Marco takes Carlotta and keeps Dante as his personal slave. What a lovely fella. Silvio Barbarigo. Raised by wealthy merchants, Silvio was introduced to politics when his father was cut out of the family inheritance. From then on, Silvio worked for his uncle, his father's killer. Apparently, he had a knack for persuasion. Quickly, he became his uncle's advisor, proving his worth by discovering a Saranzo plot against the Barbarigos. You're going to love this. Before the plot could be carried out, Silvio throws an Easter celebration, inviting the Saranzos. There's a pageant for the children in the central courtyard, while Silvio escorts the parents to the roof. He toasts the family, then signals the archers hidden behind the courtyard windows. The Saranzos never plotted against the Barbarigos again. Fast forward ten years, and Silvio's living in his uncle's luxurious Venetian palazzo. According to the history books, his uncle died in bed. <laughs> Keko and Ludovico Orsi. Bored with their leisurely life in the countryside, the Orsi brothers decided to spice things up a little. They started a money-lending business that was extremely successful, mostly because they killed anyone who didn't pay them back. Then, Caterina Sforza hired them to murder her Templar husband, Girolamo Riario, which they did in true cavalier fashion. They rode up to his palace, waltzed into the dining room, stabbed him in the chest, ransacked the estate, and left his naked body in the center of town. According to Abstergo's files, Rodrigo Borgia, after escaping from Venice, offered to pay them for the recapture of the Peace of Eden. And, of course, Caterina's head. It was the Orsi brothers' idea to kidnap her children. I ask you, what has this world come to when the rich go so bad? Girolamo Savonarola, a Dominican friar from Ferrara, this man took his job seriously. He saw the excesses of his age, the rich stomping the poor into the dirt, the priests selling indulgences to the populace, and he went insane. Calling himself an instrument of God, Savonarola descended on Firenze. His sermons sent people into frenzies. He demanded an end to all personal property, to all progress, a return to Eden. Knowledge became the enemy, and he could erase it all with the piece of Eden at his command. Books, paintings, musical instruments, he burned everything in the bonfire of the vanities. History unraveled as his legions took control, and Firenze descended into darkness. Finally, Rodrigo Borgia, a.k.a. the Spaniard, 
A dark stain on human history, Rodrigo left a trail of blood a mile wide on his quest to unify Italy under the Templar banner. Anyone who opposed him ended up in little pieces inside a sack, or, if he was in a good mood, poisoned. Once he was crowned Pope, Rodrigo, or should I say Alexander VI, used his influence to wage war with any city that held out against the Templars. And then there were the rumoured X-rated atrocities. Hundreds of courtesans brought to the Vatican by the cartload and the Pope's close friendship with his illegitimate daughter, Lucrezia. Oh yeah, and did I mention the killings never stopped? Throughout all his public debauchery, Rodrigo was quietly murdering his enemies behind the scenes, consolidating Templar power for the moment when they would seize control. all of this because not all of these have videos as you can tell I believe some of them do mainly uh where is I think Leonardo da Vinci does. no he doesn't okay so apparently only targets have them and I'm probably thinking of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood but next time we head to Roma and to end the game. Yeah. See you guys then. Zinazuma signing out.